Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. My dear friends, the information is out there. Sometimes we have to put a little bit of effort to get it, and then with the knowledge, the experience that we gathered uh, during our life, we can connect some dots, and then we reach certain conclusions. Those conclusions could, you know, change from time to time, adjust, uh, with the incoming of more information and knowledge. It's not something that is like forever. But the, I think the general direction is known. You don't know details exactly who's who, what's what, the names, but you kind of know the direction. And with time, if you pay attention, as I said, the information is there for you, for us to pick. Patience and work hard. Memory and patterns. Now, what do we have here? We have here the evidence, I would say, which I made this point before, that is not Zaluzny or the Ukrainians who are in charge of defending Ukraine. As I said many times, I think it's NATO and NATO is in charge of these guys. These guys are just informed. I'm talking, I'm talking about the Ukrainian military. Zaluzny just informed by the Americans what to do. And you call it NATO, you call it the Westerners. It's United States. So let me show you this article, which I think will help us, you know, understand better the dynamics and the chain of command. Because I would ask, why is this necessary? Ukraine form. This is Zaluzny. Zaluzny and Brown talk Ukraine army plans for, win for winter. Now, is this not clear enough for us? Zaluzny is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine. And Brown, yeah, I got him somewhere. Where is Brown? Let me see. Brown is right here. Brown is the commander in chief, right? Isn't he? So these guys are talking. One is chairman, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Very important individual in the US military, I mind you. So these guys are talking. They discuss plans for winter. Why? Why is he not discussing the plans, let's say, with the French guy? Let's so with the German guy. Is he talking only with the Americans? Sometimes the Brit knocks at the door and uh, he's allowed to stay in the corner and, uh, you know, listen. This discusses plans for winter? You can call it how they can't tell you straight, but this is the closest to understand who is who and what is what. He doesn't talk with the Romanian commander-in-chief. Now he's talking to the American. No, commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Valery Zaluzny, discussed plans for the winter period and the urgent needs of the Ukrainian army with the chief of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Brown. Do I need any more? Do I need to make my point clearer? I mean, you can, you can say, no, I mean, it's a, it's a big stretch. I don't think it's a big stretch whatsoever for the reasons I already mentioned. Why is he not talking with others? Why is he talking with this guy? The plans. So it's right there. It's not like they talked about... No, the plans. And let me show you something while we are at it. Um, this sounds very familiar to me. And I know exactly uh, with what I can put it together with. Uh, the sack of Rome. Remember the sack of Rome? The Goths came to Rome and entered and destroyed it. Well, who were the Goths and who was in charge of that? Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you a story fast and then I'm going to show you pictures of some people because I have some little questions. You see this guy over here? He is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's the biggest guy right there. This guy. And then we have... Look at him clearly, okay? Because I'm not kidding here. <laughs> right? It's just surprising. And then you have this guy. This guy is Lloyd Austin. All right? Now, this guy is what? Secretary of Defense. He's in charge of the defense. So this is actually this guy's his boss. Now, now you got this one and you got this one. Nothing wrong here. But let's see if you remember who this guy was. Alaric. Alaric the first. And now, I you know if you remember this, the sack of Rome, 410 common era. So what happened where the gods 
the Visigoths, I'm sorry, led by their king Alaric, came at Rome and said, that's it, we just sack it. And they got over. How did this Visigoth, I, I said God, but Visigoth, was able to do that? Who is Alaric? Well, we're going to find out that Alaric was the first king of the Visigoths. He rose to leadership of the Goths who came to occupy Moesia. I'm not going to show you where Moesia is. Oh, it's right there, actually. You see over there? That's Moesia. This is the Danube River, uh, right here, going like, like this. And this is Romania now, there, but whatever. So this is Moesia. So he was in charge. He came to occupy Moesia, territory acquired. And then what did he do? Combined forces of the Goths, Alans, and the Bababab. And we have here, Alaric began his career under the Gothic soldier, yet, and later joined the, what army? The Roman army, once an ally of Rome. So the Visigoths with, or the Goths with Alaric, they were, became part of the Roman army, right? And he helped defeat the Franks and others, and so on. So this Alaric, right? Stabbed for his own people, Rome. He moved with the gods, or Visigoths, which the gods and Visigoths, they moved to Rome. And the Romans could not stop them. Why? Because he was a god. He was not a Roman. He was a Roman by citizenship, right? Be careful. I'm just, uh, looks very familiar to me. And something else looks very familiar to me if you look in the history and you have to look into the, uh, well, I'm not going to go there, but French incident in uh, Haiti. Look at that one. I'm just concerned, my friends. I'm just concerned because, you see, people who um, uh, profess their, how should I put it, uh, their misfortune, saying that that's caused by other people, when they get in power, what do you think? They're going to have mercy? Just questions. History shows us no. It's the same as, let's say you are, or I don't know how you would react, but most likely, let's say you have a bully guy at school. The first opportunity when you can punch the bully in the face and pay back to the bully everything that the bully did or did not do to you, you will do it. That's called revenge or payback or equity. All right, my friends. So in this case, we have Zaluzny talking to this uh, guy right here. And this guy together with this guy will determine what the US military will do. Right? If they decide to, I don't know, put down uh, something in the, in the on the territory of the United States of America, these guys potentially are the ones who will decide what's going on. If they decide that someone does something bad and then they have to intervene against all laws and uh, constitution and all that, they will do it. Who's going to stop them? They are in charge. Military is a chain of command. It's very organized, hierarch hierarchical uh, organization. Follow orders, right? All right. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.